this is the front desk. Good morning and welcome to episode 50 of the Crack and Backs podcast with your hosts, Dr. Terry Wyman and Dr. Spencer Barron. How are you doing today, guys? Feeling, Good morning, Lance. Feeling 50. Or afternoon. <laughs> morning. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're joined by Dr. Patrick Porter, the CEO and creator of BrainTap. How are you doing today, Patrick? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, Good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you, Patrick. So go Pat- ahead. Uh, so pa- Patrick, yeah, I was just gonna, I was gonna start by telling you, you know, I, I really don't know anything about you or your brother, but I hear everything from Dr. Michael Bagnell, who <laughs> is a functional neurologist and we had on our other show, and he happens to be one of my closest friends in the whole world, but he thinks the world of you guys. So we'll start with that. And Terry, you were talking about the weather and <laughs> you had hail, so now I can officially tell you to go to hail. Is that right? <laughs> Yes, you can. <laughs> you know that was two days ago. Hey, hey, Spencer's a bit, Spencer's a bit edgy today because he looks like a giant traffic cone. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he blends in with his seat in the back. You know? <laughs> yeah. Traffic cone. I got nothing. I'm good. <laughs> hey, welcome, hey, Patrick. <laughs> this program. I think you're going to need to send me a brain tap or something. <laughs> yeah, welcome to episode 50, Patrick. You know, the big milestone uh, we chose you. I mean, that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So, hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, I got to ask you before we get into brain tap, uh, what got you? Oh I mean, <laughs> you know, with, with my traffic so, cone partner and myself, we, we want to know <laughs> what, what got you in to. Uh, the the, the uh, even back then, what, uh, what made you want to get into the brain and meditation and hypnosis or and and on and altering the brains? What what excited you about that? Like I like gotta get some background. Well, it actually started when I was a kid. My dad was a um, he was a Silva instructor, which is a meditation technique mm. where they used uh, technology driven meditation back in the seventies. Oh wow! Uh, there's a little machine called they used GSR. So that got me into it, and then it just kind of evolved over time. And actually, uh, where Lance is at there in Phoenix, I actually, my first office was in Scottsdale, oh. um, right off the McDowell and Scottsdale Road, and that's where we started everything. We built everything in the office there. We were building our first, we call it the MC Square back in the 80s, because I really love Einstein. And um, So we were talking about how you can expand consciousness or creativity oh. using uh, the MC Square, and that was the big deal back then. Nice. Nice. And then how did it, how did it come to fruition? What well, came next after all that? Yeah. Well, well, what happened was we got an award at the Consumer Electronics Show in 1989, the best new gadget of the year. And you'd think that was the best thing that could ever happen. It, it was great because we sold uh, over 200,000 pieces of equipment, but nobody knew what this was. It was before CDs, before cell phones, before everyone was doing digital. And cassettes were only out a few years at that point. So <laughs> we, we had, uh, and here we show up with these light goggles. So the company itself, which I was the science officer at that time with them, and I was the speaker and go out there speaking to people, uh, they actually uh, went out of business because they were too successful. They, could, the, they sold these big box stores, but they didn't keep them on the shelves because nobody knew what to do with them. <laughs> so what I did was I started a franchise company and grew that to 108 locations. We sold all the equipment and we uh, basically, I'm the last man standing and it's evolved over time. I've developed now 16 different versions of this. Back in 2013, uh, I finally got to build the one that I really wanted to because technology was finally available. This device used to be uh, the size of a microwave back in the 80s. Now it's, you can fit all the technology into an ear piece in the ear and goggles that. that we have. Uh, uh. So instead of it being all these pieces in this big device, and back then it also took a practitioner. You had to watch um, skin temperature, respiration, and all these different factors. So what we've done now is we do it so it just puts it on autopilot. We've done so much neuroactivity and 
tracking of the brain that we know literally 100% of the people get on this equipment, we know exactly where their brain is going to be. So much so that when I go to uh, neurological events, I'll tell, so I'll tell them, give me your most skeptical person. I'm going to put them on the equipment. And I'll tell you where their brainwave is at any moment in time while they're listening to the session. It always happens. And they go, but I've never trained my brain. They go, you don't have to because the brain learns independent of your conscious thought because our body is always matching its environment. So we use a, a science called frequency following response. And so it's just kind of evolved. Of course, you, you mentioned Dr. Bagnell, who's one of our favorite practitioners and who does golf and camp down here and all those kind of things. It's really neat. And, uh, we are, we actually, he's one of the doctors we send out there, you know, when somebody wants to know, when we want to send a big brain out, you know, Dr. Bagnell's got one of those, I mean, he's just so smart and the way he uses uh, technology to get the brain to work, whether it's an autistic child or, you know, Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and dementia, those are the kind of, uh, you know, so we use a lot of his research and then he'll do something. We'll say, but well, let's put it into the lab and see if we can get a bigger research project around it. And then he's very supportive. Him and his wife, May, are great. I mean, I love yeah. them both. Aren't they? So what are my, probably uh, Dr. Terry's and my most uh, interesting area of your development is in with the athlete and recovery. And, mm -hmm. you know, we both are, you know, our specialty is in sports injuries. We don't see a lot of complicated cases like Dr. Bagnell sees in the organic brain disorders and also not, you know, post-traumatic stuff. Although we see a lot of, you know, right. critical stuff that goes on with concussion. It's just, you know, we don't typically invite the autistic patient in and claim that we can help them as, as well as Dr. someone like Dr. Bagnell. Mm -hmm. So how does it work for uh, athletes in recovery? Well, we got some incredible stories coming out now. Just I'll, I'll kind of give you the landscape and then we'll talk about each one and how you want to handle it. Uh, we have an elite uh, practitioner or elite pro study going on right now. You have to be a starter in the NFL the NBA or the National Hockey League. Uh, and we they're already starting to post, which we asked them to just keep everything quiet, but they're so excited um, because we're doing a neural protective study. And this is based on the study we did with the U.S. snowboarders for the Olympics. When they were leading up to the Olympics, uh, Jake, Jake Cates, who's one of the Olympic snowboarders, we had him doing a brain tap and he in, in part of his team and they didn't have any concussive events during leading up to the Olympics, which has never happened because the brain tap is a neuroprotective piece of equipment, or at least that's what we're trying to prove. Um, we also have, uh, can, there's a group in Kansas City called Kansas City Sport, it's a professional soccer team. And what we did with them is we showed them how recovery is the missing link in their sports program. And usually you use HRV, you can test somebody before their workout, after their workout, and within four hours, they should be back to their baseline or they're overtraining. It's one of the ways that they monitor it. We showed them with BrainTap how we could get that same level of recovery in 20 minutes. Wow. And now, uh, now they have a 20 station uh, brain tapping room in the facility at, at KC Sports, which is the professional soccer team. But we can talk about that. And then I want to tell you about a study we just finished in with another chiropractor. In wait a minute. Wait a minute, Patrick. I don't mean to yeah. interrupt you, but I wanted to go back and ask you about neuro, neural protective. Yeah. What, what, yeah, I want to know that. Can you explain how you identify uh, neuroprotectivity or pro uh, protectivity yeah. is what I'm right. trying to say. Sure. Neuroprotectiveness or whatever, however you want to say it, but the, what happens in the brain, we're not going to avoid micro con concussions in any sport. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. the, the big ones, of course, people notice, but the small ones, they don't. So it's all the little small ones that lead to, you know, like in boxing, it's the body blows that really finally get them knocked out. Right. So, <laughs> These micro concussions, whether it's on the soccer field, hitting the ball to your head or bumping into each other or in the football field, you know, hitting each other on the line, your brain is constantly getting bruised. Mm. Now, there's a few things that need to happen there. Number one is we need to get the toxins out. So that means we need to get them sleeping better. You only clean out toxins in the brain. Uh, well, you can do it through lasers. You can get the, the glial lymphomic system to activate through light like brain tap or lasers or low level light therapy. But the way the mechanism typically works is only at night during level four sleep will the glial lymphomic system open up. In fact, for those out there that are that have a medical physiology book that's printed before 2015, you're gonna find the lymphomic system, the lymph system goes up to the neck and stops. Right, right. But any book published after 2016, which is when the American scientific or the medical community finally said, hey, there's uh, lymphatic vessels in the brain, 
but they only open up when you're in this deep level four sleep. So what happens if people are getting that deep sleep, they're never, they have foggy brain. And we also know now that if somebody has a leaky gut, you have a leaky brain because there's brain biome, just like there's a gut biome, you know, so these things connect. Mm. And the, the one part of the body that controls the whole show is the heart. Because your heart has 40,000 neutrino cells. These are, it's a heart brain. That's the brain that controls the whole system. Um, that's why I tell people, you know, there's a reason why we have more heart attacks on Monday morning than any other day of the week. People don't like their job. You know, when, when over 90% mm. of the people hold, say they don't look forward to the next week of work, that's a bad thing. We need to be doing what we love, you know, and then it doesn't feel like we work a day in our lives. Mm. So what we did with the athletes the way light works, and you can use lasers. So if there's a doctor out there going, hey, lasers will do that. Any light therapy will do this in any type of light therapy. So, I mean, whether you're using Health Light or some other brand, whatever it is, light is light. Mm. It's so, I was just at Parker's thing, and there's all these laser people and people with beds, and they're saying this one's better than that one. Light is light. It's just a matter of dose. So, how much dose it takes. For instance, with brain tap, we had doctors using lasers in the ears with auricular therapy. There's a Dr. Nojay that showed the auricular points in the ears. You could point lasers at it and get people to stop smoking or get rid of their allergies and all sorts of mm -hmm. other things. So what we did is we said, what's the dose of a 30 second to a two minute uh, treatment of laser? Let's put nine LEDs in. Let's vary the frequency. Ours is also frequency based, not just the 470 nanometer and six nanometer or 660 nanometer light. But we also pulse that light through the Noje frequency spectrum. So you can't see it with the human eye because anything faster than 32 cycles per second, you don't notice. So what happens is they put those on, and now we're doing photobiomodulation. All the blood in the body goes through the ears every three to four seconds. So if you want to get blood, if you want to get light into the brain, there's a lot of ways to do it. But one of the easiest ways is use the ears. Because the blood in the ears actually controls the temperature of the brain. Oh my gosh! Huh. So the hotter the brain gets, the more the more blood flows through the ears. Huh. Now your eyes also. Your eyes aren't just attached to the brain. Your eyes are brain matter. So with the eyes closed, we're going to use photobiomodulation again to get light into the brain. This light is what's going to do the action. So most of any doctors out there listening knows that light creates vasodilation, blood flow, circulation, nitric oxide release. This is all needed to build pathways for supplementation or nutrition to the areas of the body that have been damaged. But now, just like we all knew in physiology classes going through college, that anywhere there's a blood vessel, there's a lymphatic vessel. Just happens to be in the brain called the glial lymphomic system. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're building a way to get rid of the toxins faster. So if, if we can do, if we can treat daily with a, with a device like BrainTap, what we're proving is that you don't have the big day. The big concussion. So what is the best time of the day? Is it before bed? Is it when you wake up? And for how long is usual duration since you did give the the you know, level of intensity? I think right. With, with our concussion study that, that I'll, we, we can talk about in a moment, uh, they did it three times a week. Now, our dementia study where we showed women 55, 65 that were on the dementia scale and six weeks later were not, because they had 49% more neuroplasticity and passed all the test, uh, cognitive wow. testing with brain tap. They did it three times a day because oh. we need to get more light into the day. So the way that it works is you have to pick what time works for you, uh, Dr. Spencer. So let's say in the morning, you're, you're the kind of person that wakes up and I'm not against coffee, <laughs> but if you have to have coffee to function, you've got a neurological problem. You should be able to do your workout, do whatever, then enjoy a cup of coffee if you want. You know, it shouldn't be like, you know, the zombie right. walking to the coffee machine and saying, I can't even function. So we have sessions, we call it digital coffee. It's really a brainwave called SMR. And that's the underperforming nervous system. Those are the ones that as a chiropractor, you'd be adjusting and they just don't, doesn't work because they, their nervous system can't hold it, can't hold the charge. When we know that when we've actually done experiments with a Dr. Barwell, who's part of NeuroInfinity, or he sold it now, Clint Steele owns it now, but the, uh, we would have people actually hooked up to QEG and do an adjustment. You would be amazed what happens to the brain. The whole brain rewires, and then it settles into whatever is the psychological and neurological norm, 
And then in 72 hours, if they didn't do anything, it's going to maybe improve a little bit, but that every 72 hours, it needs to be interrupted. So what we found was that's why the, the treatment plan with the school was every, three times a week. But when somebody has a severe disorder like dementia or Alzheimer's, we need to get a lot more energy in there because they don't have energy to do the work. Mm. Part of aging, unfortunately, is that our mitochondria or our cell health has diminished. And that cell health is can be measured in the nervous system. But we also now know that through the uh, through our fibers in our body, we actually have communication through biophotonic exchange, which means through light. We They know that every 40 seconds, our body shows up differently based on all the criteria in our environment. We, we're always adapting and changing, and that's why foods are so important. You know, the food we put in has a, a role to play. Right. The thoughts we think have a role to play. Like, you know, the thoughts, traumas, and toxin model is totally in alignment with all this. If you get those three lined up, you're going to show up genetically as your best self. Right. Now, there's always ways to improve. You know, you can always upgrade your nutrition. You can always upgrade your thinking. You can always upgrade your lifestyle. Uh, and, you know, I tell people life is like playing golf. No matter how good you are, you can always improve. You know, there's always something that you can, but you don't want to beat yourself up about it. You know, that's the key thing. So the duration of the photobiomodulation or the time spent, you know, stimulating either ears or eyes is how long usually? Yeah. So in the morning, it's 10 minutes because we don't have to take them so deep. There's five primary brain waves, and we can go into that in a moment if you want to, just so people understand why we're doing the different trainings. In the middle of the day, it's a 20-minute reboot because we need to get the brain to disengage. Think of the nervous system like somebody smashing down uh, smashing on the accelerator and they can't get to the brake. You know, they need to let off on that accelerator in the middle of the afternoon. Every day at two o'clock, every person on earth, their temperature drops two degrees. Hmm. That's why we get tired. So unfortunately, most people run out to get biologics, right? They go get coffee, tea, sugar, some way to stimulate. And, and what our body's really doing, these bodies are designed for the Serengeti. So we should be taking a nap next to the zebra, you know, getting rested up for surviving the night. You know, that, that because we, you know, that limbic brain is still thinking we're about to die every moment. You know, it's still observing our experience and mm. putting us on red alert, especially if you watch the news. Yeah. You know, that's just going to, that's just going to agitate that. You know, when somebody asked me, how do you cure stress? I said, turn off the news. Yeah. You know, that's one of the, one of the best ways, <laughs> yeah. you know, in the, and then at night we have a problem with some people, in fact, over 90% of the people, when we scan them with our neural check technology, which we developed a piece of technology with the Russians, where we can measure nine different parameters of the nervous system, it takes as little as five minutes. Dr. Bagnell has that. So Dr. Spencer, if you want to go there and have him do a scan, I mean, he can do it. The, um, but what we can tell is a snapshot of what's going on with you right now. If I did an adjustment with you, which I couldn't do because I'm not a chiropractor, but I could pretend or whatever, if if, I, if a chiropractor did an adjustment, you would see the nervous system change, you know, and then so when you do the brain tap, you would see the nervous system change. If you did PEMF, you'd see the nervous <clears> system <throat> change. If you do laser treatments, you'd see the, so it's all about how does the nervous system regulate? And what we're looking for in health, we know the, the nervous system that can be flexible is the most powerful nervous system. Not one that's totally parasympathetic or totally sympathetic or totally neurohormonal. These three systems have to work together in order to have optimum health. And that's really what we're evaluating. And so at night, what we're finding is people are getting the deep sleep they need or they have a traumatic brain injury. This is where sports comes in. They don't even know it because somebody put them back into play before they were ready to do it. And mm -hmm. the brain gets compromised. So if you get compromised while you're already compromised, it's basically, you know, adding insult to injury and it doesn't repair because we need to take care of those injuries. So there's a lot of ways to do that. We use the WABI typically in schools that we work with. WABI is a QEG that measures a function of the brain called the P300. And the WABI people, you know, they would be a good ones to have on this show. And I could get them to talk. To They'd be a good ones to talk about sports performance oh, yeah. because they're the ones we did the Olympic stuff with the Jake, Jake Pates and things. But we can measure the difference between HRV, which is really powerful and we really love it, but P300 and using QEG, I can manipulate HRV because I've done it for years. I could sit there, I could always score 100. It's just a breathing process. In fact, we just had a published study with uh, 
Ames Bhopal, which is the All Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, which we work with, we did a breathing, or they call it pranayama. We did a breathing process that showed how the frontal lobe can connect. Because we're always looking for how did ancient technology do it? How's modern technology doing it? So we looked at, and so we published that paper. It can, you can do the same thing, but it takes a lot of work. You know, it takes a lot of effort to do, you know, do those yogic poses and do the breathing exercises, but the brain will balance. So it's all about brain balance and getting energy into the brain. But if you don't have uh, that P300, the evoked potential can't be faked. So you know when somebody's ready to go back to play or not. What's interesting is that, and for the listening audience, is that we do know how important sleep is. It has been underrated as something so vital to our health. But there's that phenomenon, just to play on what you had mentioned earlier, is apoptosis. It's mm -hmm. a cleaning of the brain or removal of, it's part of the lymphatic system that they didn't, they recently discovered as being something that happens at night, where even, even during those cat naps or, you know, a deep you know, power nap, as we often call it, the brain, the brain, uh, the lymphatic system in the brain drives that cleaning out of old blood, uh, excuse me, of old cells and, you know, bringing in new cells or, uh, you know, uh, you know, cellular metabolism or how the mitochondria seems to work best. So, yeah, those people who, you know, are usually in the dark or work at night or what have you, you know, obviously sleep is vital, but also stimulation of light. So the uh, we have a multi radiance uh, photobiomodulation or you know laser that <clears throat> we use at the base of the brain on some of our athletes or brain injured uh, patient mild traumatic brain injured patients you mm -hmm. know to see if they can make a difference but yeah, yeah it will light up the brain for sure we we love that the basal ganglia we put there mm -hmm. and then we also will uh, uh, we have a laser or a high dose LED pad really it's a, it's about this size. And um, it only takes a 30 second dose around the brain. And some people will do that while they're doing brain tap as well. Where that's the LZW or something like laser we, we started using. It's not really a laser though, it's, it's high dose yeah. LED. LED. So yeah. um, uh, the lasers, like we use the shed light laser a lot because it can also do frequencies. You can tune it to whatever brain frequency. And what we find if somebody's got dementia, the left hemisphere is moving slower than the right. So we'll put that laser up here on alpha and mm -hmm. on the left, you know, on the left uh, frontal lobe, and that'll give it the energy. You need that energy to move the brain. So, uh, you know, that, that's part of it. And with, with concussions, what we're finding is it's almost like somebody took a, a three switch light and put it down to one, you know, the lowest light, the, the brain's still there, but the brain's trying to shut down to reboot the needle. <laughs> And people keep going and going. We, we, when you talk about light, we did a, we just finished a study that's being published out of Australia. In Western Australia, we did a sleep study with miners. They never see the light of day. Mm. They actually go to work in the dark. They work in the dark. They leave in the dark. And uh, this uh, Dr. Cone, who was the one who on site who ran the study, they actually let us put chairs in the facility so that um, when they came to work, they do a session. In the middle of the work, in the middle of the day, they do a session. Mm -hmm. Before they left, they did a session. The first mm -hmm. thing we had to do was get them to stop drinking. These guys are like savages. They come in drinking because that's the only way they could downregulate, you know. So we showed them what that does to the brain, and we got most of them to stop drinking. But in a six-week period, we had seventy percent improvement of sleep efficiency. They were so bad. These people were so bad. They they were not even getting even 10 minutes of deep sleep a night. And you need at least an hour to, to function. Two hours is perfect, you know, to, to get, because every, you kind of go down, you're going up and down. It's not like two hours in one stretch. These are called Delta microbursts. And that's when the, the glial lymphoma system says, okay, let's get rid of those toxins. It's not going to dump the whole toxic load into the bloodstream because then, or into the lymphatic stream because it would get clogged up. So it's just these little bursts. I got, I got a question for you, I, and I don't mean to take you too off the track, but do you have any um, understanding of how the big magnets work? There's, you know, uh, what do they call it? Um, they use magnet therapy for some of the brain injured patients, or there was some speculation or some. We did a study with them, there. actually. I can tell you about. Uh, yeah, please. They, uh, we saw somebody present at the autism conference a few years back, and unfortunately, this group was not very ethical because they, we knew the person who was running the study. And 
you have to pay five thousand dollars first of all to see if you qualify. So they're taking these were autistic homes. They're already money is tight, and mm. uh, there were over thirty people that didn't qualify for their study. So I took those on as brain tap. I gave them a brain tap and I said, let's do the study alongside with them. So magnetic resonant therapy. These kids were throwing up, getting knocked out. It's a very violent. Uh, thing mm. and it does move brains. I mean, it will move brain waves. But six months later, which they didn't tell people, every person in their study went right back to their their other brains. Wow. Uh, wow! There was no brain training. Where the brain tap group, we got twenty three percent improvement in alpha, and then at the end of six weeks, they still had twenty three percent improvement of alpha because they had the device at home to use at least three times a week. You can't yeah. take that big giant multi million dollar magnetic yeah. resonance therapy. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. The, so what what was interesting was they they told our doctor that was helping them with it. They said, "Well, why don't we do magnetic resonant therapy? Then we'll do brain tap afterwards." So it's like, and then of course it would stay because now you're training the brain. But they paid almost sixty thousand dollars to have that group. Wow. And so you know, so oh, a, a lot of ways the brain doesn't learn best by damage. It learns yeah. best by you yeah. know, like almost like. A, a symphony, we, we call it a symphony of brainwaves. We need stimulus that's, that's uh, good for the brain. Yeah. You know, it was actually about five years ago that I saw something magnificent happen. And you mentioned earlier about, you know, the, you know, the manipulation of the spine or extremities and how it's, it has an effect on the brain. And, you know, I imagine, you know, in addition to any kind of photobiomodulation, you really mount the effects even more positive. But we did a saccadometer test, uh, that 90 second measuring of your, you know, eye, your, your eyes and how they move uh, to the target, how fast they move, the accuracy. And believe it or not, the third thing was, uh, was, was quite interesting. If your mo eyes are moving at the same, uh, moving the same way, you know, we, we, we obviously see people with, you know, uh, you know, I, an eye that drifts or what have you, but this tests those things. And it's a, a, a little, um, you know, it's like glasses you put on and it has, uh, you know, red dots that, you know, line up on at different points on the wall. Um, but the functional neurologist that we had at our office told me to adjust because uh, we had known the patient had injured the left side of the brain and uh, he was an NFL player. And in fact, that's why he left the league because of concussion and, and terrible headaches. So the, the guy told the uh, functional neurologist told me to adjust the right side of the body only. I go, how do you adjust just the right side of the spine? He goes, no, no, no. Adjust the right shoulder, you know, the rest of the limb, the right le hip and leg and, and, uh, mm -hmm. fingers and everything. And, uh, and I did. And since it's a 90 second test, we put the guy, the, the NFL guy back on to the, the test and it showed, it showed on the graph that the left hemisphere booted up. Interesting. I mean, to equal out the other side. So wow. what that told me is how powerful and underplayed our chiropractic adjustment is based on, and I, I got all excited about it. And he told me, he said, listen, 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 you ever adjust a patient? And that comes in with low back pain and they get up off the table going, oh my God, that was great. You know, and some of them don't do that. Well, this was one of those cases that do. So I, I can imagine how effective now that photobiomodulation or, you know, or like a brain tap device and an adjustment can be super powerful to some of our athletes. So, so let's talk about why some people, why it diminishes when the study that we did, what we wanted to prove was brain fitness. Not just that we can improve the brain at that moment. Because right. like you're saying, you get that all the time. People jump up, they go, magic happened. And then you see yeah, it. Yeah. All that pain's back. Well, <laughs> and they go back the next week. Right, right, yeah, right. Because the nervous system is always trying to go back to whatever your neurological norm is. So we need to have stuff, things they do at home. Like at the neural center in, in life, they give everybody a brain tap to go home with. So mm. they, that way, when they after you do, we can't do with brain tap what you can do neurologically. That's impossible. You know, you got to do your thing. You got to do all the work. And we use like saccades and things like that you're talking about to measure. And that's really key. And so the the main thing is getting energy in. But what we did in Michigan with Dr. Arkefeld, he's the school doctor for all concussions. So in 2020, 
uh, anybody who got a concussion in the school, cheerleader, football player, soccer player, wrestler, whatever, they went through Dr. Arkefeld's program. And we had a protocol that they did. So they all got the normal care. But 50% of them, while they were doing their Normatec boots and uh, you know getting the lymphatic flush, they were doing brain tap. That's the only thing they did different during their therapy. We followed them for a year after and then did all the neurological tests. The lowest improvement was 50% across all neurological meetings. Wow. The group wow. that just did the neurological training and, and Dr. Arkwood said, I did the same thing with them. The only thing we didn't do was brain death. Yes. So we, we also did some studies with Dr. Heidi Habit, which you might know she's a ah, superstar. Yes. And, uh, she's yeah. a brain tapper too, by the way. She loves it. Her and her yeah. husband. Friend. And she's brilliant. we showed how after you do the adjustment, now that the brain is now wired up. I mean, you just basically shot uh, so much voltage through their system that if they had some blockages, it's now reconnected. Now what's going to happen is the brain's going to start trying to conserve energy again. It's going to say, let's, what do we have to do? Because we're not used to being over here. So let's shut that down. Let's shut, but if you run either laser or if you do brain tap, what will happen? Because brain tap's unattended. You just put it over the corner with a zero gravity chair or something. They put it on. Now the brain that's, that's fixed by the chiropractor, and by the way, most chiropractors, I'm hoping, know this, 70% of the nervous system's in the brain. That's why you can adjust the pinky and their brain adjusts, you know, because basically think of the nervous system like an antenna. It's, it's, it's basically processing information for the brain to make decisions. But it, when, if they're laying there still, they haven't messed with your neurological solution yet. They just walked over, got in zero gravity where there's no pressure on the spine. The skull has to breathe. You know, that's what happens when that spinal fluid comes up. It's washing over the, the dendrites and cleaning out the brain as well. In concussions, that's jacked. So even if they get all the great medical treatment and they're doing, it doesn't do anything because the brain is not detoxing because you have to get that brain breathing like, you know, like this. What we know is that light therapy can do that. Like when you're putting the laser in the nasal ganglia, it's mm -hmm. actually releasing all the tension in the dura. So now mm -hmm. the brain can breathe and they'll go, wow, I have so much energy. Well, before... They couldn't get the energy. It was trapped. It had a ceiling. So mm -hmm. once you do that, now our, we have seven sessions we did with people like Dr. Barwell, Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Bagnell. They all helped me to write the neurologically based chiropractic series because I'm not a chiropractor. I know a lot about the nervous system, but I wanted to hear it. For, so we have seven client sessions that talk about the importance of why these two are working together. Because a lot of times the patient's list, listening going, this isn't chiropractic care. They don't understand. Just like any other doctor, a chiropractor is a wellness professional. A lot of people are under the misunderstanding that you're back doctors. You are functional neurologists. Right. You know, and so that's, I mean, chiropractic is just one methodology. There's a lot more in the tool bag of a chiropractor than just the adjustment, right? right? So I mean, that's what, I think that's part of the mission, like people like Bagnell and why I work with chiropractors is they at least have an open mind that the power that made the body can heal the body, right? Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> you know, medical, the medical world out there, the pharmaceutical world thinks the power outside the body can heal the body, which is never the case. Right. It's always, even if they take a supplement, even if they take a supplement or just give an example or, so the listeners understand, Dr. Rosenthal, who's out of Dallas, he's also a neurological doctor. We do a lot with him and he, he asked me, can we do a psilocybin study with PTSD with the brain tap? And I said, well, I've never done a psilocybin, but it'd be interesting. You know, I've heard all about this. And so we had, in the study, there were about 50% of the people who did not want to do a psilocybin. They were afraid, you know, that you know, what was going to happen. So I said, the ones that want to do it, let's do QEG readings on them. Let's see what the brain's doing. Because I had no idea. I mean, here's a chance to measure some brains these people on these trips. You know, and what we found was they had a high degree of gamma. <laughs> You know, they're going on these out-of-body kind of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what, we, what I did is I now have 10 sessions in the app that are gamma. And the other people that didn't do this, didn't do the psychedelics are coming back reporting that they're having the same experiences as the people oh. that did the psychedelics. Wow. And, and De Dr. Rosenstall said, why did they do that? I said, well, when you have high theta and you have gamma, you're producing GABA. <clears throat> GABA is the precursor to DMT in the brain. So you don't have to take you you can get high in your own supply. You don't have to, you know, put it in from somewhere else. 
Wow. So that's what well, yeah. The yeah. It, the brain, and the brain rewires with that gamma. Uh -huh. It basically blows out toxins. It's like it, that's what it, that's what they the the studies show at uh, MIT with Dr. Dr. Lu Tai. We, we went and visited her. She has a device. It's ten million dollars. They have a room at MIT you can sit in to gain six percent more gamma. I showed her that brain tap averages twenty one percent improvement in gamma. So did she believe you? <laughs> million dollars or six hundred forty dollars. You know. So the, the some sometimes people make it way too complex than it, than it needs to be. Dr. Porter, let me ask you a question. You you have a lot. You have research that you've done. You know trials and studies and i and i commend you on that because we all need to see just how the brain really functions but do you have any naysayers out there that you know that kind of like with the uh, chiropractors there's always someone in the in the in the bunch that well there as this chiropractor I think that doesn't Bagnell work was one of the naysayers he oh. was a big naysayer when we first met him yeah he had his his company called plasticity or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. i remember yeah. for years yeah. trying to get him to even try it because it seems like the smarter somebody is, the less likely they are to look outside of their own brain for a solution. You know, they've got it all. But finally, I was able to get him at one of the conventions to sit down and show him what was happening. Then he became an advocate. He needed the science. That's why we we have the the neuropathy. But like Dr. Carrick, the yeah. Carrick Institute, his oh, yeah. daughter was the one that convinced him because they her her son started using brain tap, getting results. Before yeah. that, Carrick would never let me speak or talk to his people. Now I'm, you know, on there all the time and doing because it, it has to get the family. And then, uh, yeah, right. You know who Robert Melillo is? Um, he wrote the book Disassociated Kids. Mm. He started the franchise Balanced Brain. He's a chiropractor. He's pretty famous out there with IAFNER, the uh, the International Association of Functional oh. Neurologists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a chance in I think it was uh, 2018 to travel for three weeks with him through Sweden. We didn't know that. We were both brought over with this, this group. So I'm showing them everything. So he started to learn about brain tap. And at first he's like, you know, that's nothing. And then once he saw the doctors coming back and the doctors that used it for years coming back saying this is what the patients are experiencing, finally he goes, let me try that. And then two years ago, he gave me a lifetime achievement award. This is <laughs> somebody that wouldn't even, you know, right, it's right, like right. They, the, the thing is that it's not very expensive. I could be selling it for a lot more. I mean, the first units that we had in the 80s were $10,000. Oh, wow. Because they were only for clinicians. My my whole goal, because I had I needed help. I was a I was held back in second grade. My brain wasn't right. I was an artist. It wasn't because of drugs or an accident or something like that. But it was just that in I didn't second really grade, care about right. school. You know, <laughs> I wanted to draw and play. And Sister Barbara wanted me to be attentive. You know, so I, I think she had a crush on me, so she held me back. So. <laughs> But, you know, the, those are the kind of things that happen. And, and basically, once I started using, balancing my brain, really, I didn't realize that's what I was doing at first. But as the science wasn't there in the 80s, we couldn't, we didn't know what the neurology was doing. I mean, somebody goes, did you do, did you do neurofeedback when you were little? I, there was no neurofeedback. What are you feedback. Talking about? We had biofeedback. You know, we had right. skin temperature, respiration, and uh, heart rate, and things like that. We didn't have the other solutions. So that's kind of the way that it goes so there, there's always naysayers yeah uh, the nice thing now is like dr fab mancini which you might know who he is he used to run parker college yeah right i remember when we this was over 10 years ago or whatever we were getting into parker and he wouldn't even let me buy a booth huh. because he thought that it was just quack science so uh dr barwell who's with neuro infinity said no he had to vouch for me you're like this is real science. We we've tested it with our with our QEG equipment. It moves the brain and does all this. And uh, there's a real connection with chiropractic. Now Dr. Fab's on our team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I love people that are naysayers because once they see the science and feel the results and they actually verify it for themselves, they become our strongest advocates. Hey. Because this is an area of the brain. When we go into the grocery store, what do we see half the time on the covers of these magazines now are brains? You know, right. people are becoming aware right. of it because we all have one. And uh, <laughs> not that we all use them, but we all have one. We should start making it healthy and, and uh, you know, living. I, I like to remind people that in the ancient ancient times, they didn't give the wisdom to the young people. They gave the <laughs> wisdom of the tribe to the elders. Mm -hmm. Why are our elders becoming senile? It's because of lifestyle mm -hmm. more than anything else. Wow. That's right. not, there's three phases to wellness that I always talk about. 
Number one, you can't outthink a bad diet. You know, you've got to eat well. Your body can't, unless you're St. Germain and you can, you know, basically morph negative foods into positive foods, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, number two is you've got to have your body, especially your spine, moving and breathing. Because if there's no communication between the body and the brain, you're, that's why now they say sitting is the new smoking. Mm. The body needs to move and breathe. Mm. You know, number three is we need to have, now we know we need some kind of brain fitness. Now, we used to get this all the time because we'd be walking all day. We'd be exercising, running. We didn't sit at desk and do these things. We were up doing it. And, and that's why a lot of chiropractors, you're up all day. You know, you're walking through the clinic, adjusting people, doing things. That's a, that's a job that's really good for the nervous system. When we get to see them at a conference, when they're sitting in the chairs for a conference, mm -hmm. their nervous system sometimes doesn't show up the same way because the nervous system is whatever has happened in the last few days. So you've taken a plane ride somewhere, you sit in a chair, and they go, well, I think I'm healthy. Why am I like that? Well, HRV or the nervous system, that's it's just a snapshot. But if we want to change it, we know you have to at least do it three times a week. That's why I think chiropractors also are under severe situations. Or when somebody comes in chronic, you got to see them three times a week or more to get the the move the movement in the nervous system. We can yeah. prove that with our mm -hmm. device. And that's the that's the cool thing is that because people will often think, oh, you're just making me do this so you can get more money out of me. No, when when I had our clinic going and we had a chiropractor on staff, and people said that I said, no, we don't accept you if you don't accept our recommendation because we know we're not we can't half fix you. We either got to you know we either got to get your nervous system functioning as intended. Or we got to have you go down the road where you get half the care you want, you know. So that's the that's the way that it works. And, and a lot of doctors just aren't work, aren't, aren't willing to say that. They'll say, "Oh, I'll I'll just do it once a week," and then they get half care, and they wonder why only five to ten percent of people are using chiropractors because they're they're only they're myopic. You, I think every chiropractor should have four or five hundred people that just treat them as their primary care physician because mm -hmm. we don't have a wellness solution in our medical solution. We have a sickness solution. Chiropractors actually have a wellness solution. Right. So they need to start thinking of themselves as wellness doctors. And the others are critical care doctors. I mean, I, I, you know, unless a chiropractor can set a bone, you know, we have to go to the hospital if we break our leg or something. I think that might be the more profound statement is how, you know, we are wellness care, more wellness care. We should really corner the market on that and get people to understand and one of the other things I think was profound that you said is how our elders of yesteryear were so integral in the education and wisdom of the the youth. And that's not like that anymore. Instead, we put these older folks in homes and they're isolated with other older folks and there's no conversation. That's a good point as well. Well, look, you know, at, your dog, a, look at your dogs and cats. If you have an elderly dog and cat, you want to live longer, you get a new cat or dog, a puppy. That dog will, yes. they've actually proven it, it will live a couple years longer because the grandparents should be teaching the kids because hmm. the parents are too busy being trying to be parents. They don't know. I mean, I was a parent. I do a much better job as a grandfather than I ever did as a parent. You know, that's the, that's the way it works. Wait, I'm going to yell to my uh, old dog that we're going to get a puppy today. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good point. Hey, Terry, go ahead. Hey, Doc. Um, I got to ask you a question because on the on, on your brain tap, there's a lot of programs that are uh, auditory. And so mm -hmm. is most of the brain tap based off of the lasers and the light or is it based off of your verbal communications? Because I know some people that have them that just mm -hmm. listen to them with earbuds. Are they going to get the same effect or is, is it primary the light and then the secondary is the auditory or is it? Can you explain the difference and because your yeah. program? So, yeah, we're doing studies now. All of our studies include a app only version because people ask that question all the time. <laughs> and what we're finding is it takes about twice as long to get the result that you can. Uh, like sleep, that sleep study I was talking about from Australia, yeah. half the group only used uh, the app. They got to the same place. What took the group with the headlight three, three weeks, it took them six weeks. Oh, okay. So they have to do a little bit more. Now, our body, we have something on our bodies called chromophores. These are the batteries on every cell, and they hold energy. And our body is designed to collect energy through light, sound, and vibration. So we've all been to parties before. Maybe we didn't want to be there, but they started playing music we liked, and so we start tapping our toes and start kind of getting into it. And somebody comes over and says, 
yeah, I thought you didn't want to be here. And you go, well, the music moves you because our body collects energy through sound. So the first thing that we did was sound, and we worked with how do we use sound to balance the brain. Most people don't realize this, but your ears collect 25,000 pieces of information every second. Now, we only act on 40 of them. So we have to have very unique sound and signals that affect the limbic brain. That's what we're doing. That's You don't hear it really in the because it's it's either on the cusp of our hearing, but our brain is measuring that and using that information. That's what's balancing the brain. And we're using three different kinds of sounds, including my voice is four. So we have we have the binaural beats, the isochronic tones, and we have frequencies. And then if we put music in there and my voice, those are all mixed together in an, in an algorithm that the body, the brain follows. And the brain follows it at the cortical level, not the conscious level is fine, but even when somebody falls asleep, we've had people fall asleep in seminars. We've had them hooked up where they can see their EEG on the screen, and they'll come back out and after the session go, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. I'm so tired, and everybody starts laughing because they said, well, every place you were at, Dr. Porter said your brain was going to be there, and you were there every time <laughs> you checked in because it doesn't matter. You're almost like to train the brain. It's almost like your conscious mind is a passenger. You know, when, when Bruce Lipton said 95% of our physical reality is controlled by our subconscious, he meant that. Mm. You know, 5% controls, we can make choices like we can choose to be angry or upset, but a lot of times that anger and upsetness comes before we even think about it. You know, we start, we get that feeling first, so that's part of it. Now, the light, what's important about the light is that's what made us different in the 80s when the EEPROM chip came out and the programmable chip because... Uh, a candle in, again, using ancient traditions, people would meditate to candles. You know, we see them in churches. We see them everywhere. There, People do it in their bathtub so they can relax while they're taking baths, you know, and things like that. A candle or a fire, like, for instance, if you've ever been in a romantic getaway and with your sweetheart and you you light a fire. Never. You're, <laughs> That's why I do my thing with uh, Spencer. He's my romantic getaway when we travel. Okay, there you go. So he's got his cone up so nobody gets <laughs> close to the fire. So you can... go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what happens is that fire actually has a flicker response of 10 hertz. So when we got the LEDs, we said, the first thing we did was, can we program an LED to flicker like a candle? And we could. And then we said, what happens when we move it? Because we know 10 hertz frequency is a really important frequency for the body. It's like an idle frequency. And then there's another frequency, 7.8 hertz frequency, that's another idle frequency for the brain. That happens to be the Schumann frequency or the Earth frequency. So our bodies are designed to take in mm. lower frequencies, like 0 0.5 to 100. Um, you know, the cell towers, mm. for instance, they could be using these frequencies. We could be being beamed and broadcast feeling frequencies all day long if they wanted to. But instead, they're using this G5, which is 50 million pulses per second. Now, our body's trying to figure that out. That's why 20% of the people get EMF poisoning, is their body's overdoing it. If we can just, if once our brain learns that that's a useless piece of information, it won't process through our nervous system. But right mm -hmm. now, it's so new to, we've never experienced this before. You know, all this electronic smog is very new to our body. But our body is always trying to match its environment. So that's why it's so important to ground yourself, get out in nature, you know, move and breathe and all those kind of things that we do. And the most important thing for us is the words are important because we know they can change 2,300 gene expressions. So, but also light changes gene expression. Sound changes gene expression. And what we want to do is we want to get people expressing as their highest potential, you know, we can't tell them what to think, but hopefully we can train them how to think, have more energy to make better decisions, and get the recovery. The whole thing is about recovery. I think that's the big, that's the missing piece in everything, is people don't understand the value. Because we're taught as Americans not to be lazy. You know, you can't just lay there for 15, 20 minutes. You know, but you're not just laying there. If you're doing, even if you're listening to classical music, there's something called the Mozart effect. Mm -hmm. And you can play this classical music your nervous system is actually doing something. You're balancing the hemispheres. You're offloading stress. You're processing your day. All of these things are very important to a well-rounded, healthy nervous system, which then plays into something called psychoimmunology, which is a big topic right now. If you, the, biggest, the biggest way to shut down your immune system is create fear. 
because fear shuts down the whole system. All negative emotions have one thing in common. They stop you from breathing. So like a mask, you know, you're going to, you know, when I, when I did the research on hypoxia, you know, climbing mountains seems like a great deal, a great lot of fun, but they've done studies on mountain climbers in their white matter and gray matter both explode at altitude. And it's not because of altitude. It's because of lack of oxygen. So that's my problem. So, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, not yeah. ours. We're below sea yeah, level. Yeah, it's been a long yeah. time above. <laughs> hey, Dr. Porter, we're going to have to wrap up, but oh. I want to. I want to really uh, commend you on a, you know several little uh, anecdotes and or storylines that you had shared that were really a benefit that can our you, viewers and listeners, especially the last thing you said about recovery. Recovery is so important these days, and. Athletes seem to be getting that a little bit better now because the overtraining perspective is really – actually, our youth has been overtraining terribly because they – remember the days where we would have multiple sports? Well, now, you know, we get these patients yeah. that come in that – that are youth aged and they get one sport and they do it around. perennially. Yeah. And we're seeing adult styled injuries in them. Yeah. So recovery is such a key, brain especially, because of the fact that how you mentioned 75% of our nervous system is above our shoulders. So thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, I'm all a, I'm your, go, your wisdom. I'm gonna go put this on right now, baby. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> Was, was that is, is that your your infomercial right there? There you go. All right. So, uh, thank you, Doctor Porter. Appreciate, we appreciate you. you. Want to wrap up with minutes, there? Your your education, your knowledge was fascinating. Thank you so much. Right. We're gonna have to have you back on because that was yeah. You know, that's you have too much knowledge in your brain for for one show. We're gonna have to have you on for part two. Sure. Love to do Thank that. You. Just let, let me know and I'll be there. Uh, it's always fun to talk to people who are out there changing the world. Uh, so well, there. thank you so much. We thank, really appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Have, much appreciated. Have a great day, buddy.